Good morning, this is Pastor Mike Miano from the Blue Point Bible Church, and wanted to do a quick video. We've been going over Kurt Simmons' Road Back to Preterism here at Blue Point Bible Church on our Monday night Bible study called Knowledge Nights. And since I'm going to be out of the office today, I figured that it would be a, a great way to make sure we're staying on track of getting through the video, and also to maybe hit some of you out there in the internet world that are not familiar with this writing and all that's being developed within it. So I figured I'd welcome you into it. So what I'll do is I'm going to read over it, and then we're going to go through, and we'll discuss some of the stuff. Obviously, I would invite some of you to read out loud as well. Uh, I think that definitely does something in the mind. So uh, as you're going through it, read it out loud to yourself, and uh, really listen to what's being said in this passage, in this article. So what we're up to, what this article does is it goes through the progressions of how the church has deviated away from the true biblical teachings of preterism, which is a common question that many preterists hear. When I'll tell people, you know, the logical and consistent way that the Bible can be explained, they'll say, well, how come the church has missed this? So this article is dealing with that, and uh, Kurt definitely deserves an applaud for writing and, and condensing this information. So what we're up to is the 1800s. We've just moved away from historicism and how that had been a popular view within the church of the book of Revelation and end time prophecy. So now we're getting into the academic rebirth of preterism. Obviously, preterism being the, the proper view that the apostles would have understood. And we've seen how we got into, uh, you know, chiliasm and we got into historicism and these and different views had developed in the early church. So now in the 1800s, we begin to see the academic rebirth of preterism. And here I'll read. It says, Preterism experienced a brief rebirth in the midst of the Reformation when the Spanish Jesuit Luis de Alcazar published his commentary called Investigation of the Hidden Sense of the Apocalypse. Alcazar post proposed that Revelation applied to Christianity's triumph over Judaism and pagan Rome. According to Alcazar, Revelation chapters 1 through 11 describe the rejection of the Jews and the destruction of Jerusalem by the Romans. Chapter 12 through 19 describe the overthrow of Roman paganism, the great harlot, and the conversion of the empire to the church. Chapter 20 describes the persecution and judgment upon the Antichrist identified as Nero Caesar. Revelation 21 through 22 describes, describes the triumph of the New Jerusalem, the Roman Catholic Church. In attempting to understand Revelation in terms of the historical circumstances of its recipients, Alcazar employed the scientific canons of literary criticism and thus came very close to a correct understanding of the book. However, in ascribing the final victory of the Roman Catholic Church, Alcazar struck a sour note at a time when Europe and the world was committed to breaking ties with Papal Rome. Preterism's rebirth was thus abortive and would have had to wait almost 300 years before it received serious attention again. In the mid to late 1800s, 1800s scholars began to realize that the preterist context of revelation and related eschatological events. Some of the preterist titles of this period include Moses Stewart's Commentary on the Apocalypse, written, in, uh, written and published in 1845, J. Stuart Russell, The Parousia, written and published in 1887, F. W. Farrar, The Late Canon of Winst Westminster, The Early Days of Christianity, written and published in 1891, and Milton S. Terry, or Terry Milton, his uh, writing Biblical Hermeneutics, which was written and published in 1890 as well as Biblical ap Apocalyptics in 1898. It was uh, Milton Terry who had this to say in his Biblical Apocalyptics book concerning the seventh trumpet of Revelations 11.15 and the latter days. And he says, The seventh trumpet, as we understand in this book, is symbolic to the signal end of the old dispensation and the consequent beginning of the new era of the kingdom of Christ on earth. And he goes on to say, This end of times belongs not to the era of the new dispensation, but to the concluding days of the old. It is a serious error, therefore, when learned exegetes persist in assuming that the phrase last days, as employed in the scriptures, means the period of the new Christian dispensation. With the exception of Russell's parousia, the above titles were partial preterist and assumed that at least some of Revelation's imagery remained to be fulfilled. At this stage, preterism was merely academic, existing only in scholarly circles. It would be another hundred years before preterism would become a grassroots movement, because at this stage, preterism existed only at an academic level. It was destined to be eclipsed by a rebirth of chiliasm in the form of dispensationalism. 
So what we just read was we read through this academic rebirth of preterism, and you know obviously it's being attributed to Spanish Jesuit Luis de Alcazar. Now a lot of times people will say, oh, preterism was started as a um, response to the Reformation. You know, it was the Catholic Church basically defending themselves, or Alcazar at least defending the Catholic Church. I agree. I see that in part. I see obviously him instead showing how the Roman Catholic Church has been victorious and how Constantine converted the empire and moving toward a victorious state as the Roman Catholic Church. But what he did get right was in looking at the Bible by understanding the original audience relevance, or according to this writing, the historical circumstances of its recipients and the scientific literary criticism that he used in understanding the text. We would say some things that need to be employed as time statements, audience relevance, meaning if I write a letter to you, obviously the first person we would want to understand how they interpreted it is you, you and I, you know, how I intended you to understand it and how you understand it as the recipient. So when we're reading the New Testament scriptures, we have to put ourselves in that context and understand how these people would be looking at it. And he goes on to say basically that at this time during the Reformation, you have to imagine he's defending the Catholic Church. So in his defense, obviously this preterist stuff is just completely overlooked because it's looked at as though it's trying to defend something that everybody's trying to move away from. And obviously we do that. We see that today in preterism. We see people coming in with their presuppositions. You know, if you were a Church of Christ or if you were a fundamental Baptist, you come in with your roots of the things you've been learning about. And that's why we see such discussions happening in preterism as far as baptism, the devil, charismatic gifts, and so on and so forth. Because we do carry our presuppositions with us into preterism. So that's why we see a lot of the debates. Maybe we see them on Facebook or on forums and so forth. And then it says that basically preterism's rebirth was thus abortive and would have had to wait almost 300 years before it received serious attention again. And here we are in 21st century, 2014, talking about full preterism by people that have been leading, that, leading this from the 1980s, even going back to the 1970s. So, well, actually, I have the privilege of uh, starting today. I'm going to read the Parousia by J. Stuart Russell, uh, obviously in preparation of my upcoming debate regarding the second coming of Christ with Pastor Bruce Bennett. So, you know, these are writings that we should be paying attention to. But now I just want to get to the end of the article here. And it says, because at this stage, preterism existed only at academic levels. It was destined to be eclipsed by the rebirth of chiliasm in the form of dispensationalism. When I first became a preterist, I was uh, pretty aggravated that this was almost kept secret, that people aren't understanding this clear and consistent way of looking at the Bible and thus making sense. You know, if Christianity is true, then it should be able to be explained basically and logically. So I started to really question why this wasn't receiving the attention it did, and it should. And I started to meet some of the people, the leaders within the full preterist movement, you know, men such as Don Preston, Alan Bondar, um, you know, Kurt Simmons, Ed Stevens, and started to familiarize myself with their writings. Anybody that knows me personally would know my preterist box, my big box that I have of all the articles that I first started reading when I first became, got introduced and started to kind of have an obsession with full preterism. So... I started to get stressed out and, you know, wondering why is this not growing? Why isn't it being told the proper way? And I realized what's needed in preterism. And this I'm speaking, this is sort of my preaching to you in the beginning days of 2014. What we need to see in preterism, in preterism, in preterism is marketing. And I don't say marketing to make it sound like a business or anything like that. I say marketing as far as evangelism and e missional evangelistic mentality that we're trying to provide a message, a service of love to other people. But we have to have that passion. We have to have that evangelistic attitude that we believe that this truly is the healing of the nations. And we have to familiarize ourselves with why we believe this is so important and how is this lived out in the 21st century. Yesterday I had the privilege of talking to Mike Ferris and we were talking about it and basically we would agree that men such as Alan Hirsch or Shane Claiborne, um, even going as far as you know more uh, Pentecostal crowds, Mark Batterson and his books, Primal and uh, in the in a pit with a lion on a snowy day. These guys seem to get it. They give that. They provide that passion that's needed to live out biblical Christianity. And 
that's what I want to urge everybody to do is to start to really think about the ways that we can be evangelistic, the ways we can actually live out the healing of the nations. That's the goal. Let preterism be beyond the academic and the arguments and the, the different things. Learn how to have passion about spreading the truth and opening up the eyes of the public to the things of God. Again, Pastor Mike Miano, what I will do is I will provide a couple links at the end of this broadcast. If you go on the YouTube page or if you go on the Facebook, um, the YouTube account, you'll see at the bottom a couple links that you can actually check out their sermons that I have preached here at Blue Point Bible Church concerning my vision not only for our church, but for full preterism in general. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in.